Hey friends, this is Visionary 3D, and in this video, we're going to be talking about TSL, the new 3JS shading language. I've been using WebGPU for over two years now, and this is the first time that I'm actually trying the new version of 3JS that also includes this language called TSL. And there's a lot of hype around TSL on social media, so I wanted to try it out and uh, see what I can create with it. So I created this project with TSL. At first glance, it seems pretty basic and simple. Uh, it's just a three-dimensional grid of cubes. But uh, what's happening here is actually pretty interesting because the entire code that's helping us position these cubes in this 3D grid of points is running fully on the GPU using shaders. And TSL is helping us do this. So let's take a look at some code. The GitHub link for this code is in the description, so check that out if you're interested. But first, I want to give you an overview of this project. So first of all, I'm using React 3 Fiber, which is a library that helps us mix React with 3.js. I don't use this library much, but today we'll use it because it makes our job a little bit easier. First of all, I'm changing the default renderer to be a WebGP renderer, which comes from 3.js. And for those who don't know, I'm going to give you some background into what this actually is. So the web platform has two major graphics APIs. The first one is WebGL, which was created and released in March of 2011. So it's a quite old API. And at some point, this old design was no longer compatible with the new features of the current GPUs. And the current GPUs, as you know, are quite capable now. So... In 2018, the WebGPU project was started to help create a superior graphics API for the web. The key part that I want you to pay attention to is that WebGPU was created with the intention of fully replacing WebGL. Keep that in mind. It's going to become useful later in this conversation. So 3GS previously only supported WebGL and it had a WebGL renderer. But now it supports a new web GPU renderer and you want to make sure that you're using this one. So if we go at the top, I'm importing some utility functions or nodes from 3 slash TSL. This is the new TSL. So what exactly is TSL and what problem is it trying to solve? So for us to understand TSL, we need to understand what a shader is. A shader is a program that runs on the GPU. And when I say a shader is a program, it means that it can be programmed. So it has a programming language. In the case of WebGL, this programming language is called GLSL. And in the case of WebGPU, this programming language is called WGSL, which is pronounced Wixel. And I'll be calling it Wixel from now on. 3.js wanted to support both WebGL and WebGPU at the same time. So it created a new language, a third language called TSL, which transpiles to Wixel or GLSL based on the backend graphics API. So let's take a quick look at TSL and what it can do. So I'm going to start from the bottom here where we define a color node. TSL is a node-based system. And well, what is a node? A node is a JavaScript object that is created with some of the default nodes in TSL. So for example, this color node, if I go up here, you can see I'm importing this color node from 3 slash TSL. And using this color function, I can create this color node. And then I pass this color node into my material here which is a mesh physical node material. And this determines the color of our objects. For example, here you can see this color. If I change this uh, color node that we have to something like this, which is more orange, and if I reload, you can see we get that color. Now, this is very powerful because previously, if you wanted to define the color of a physical material, we would define a solid color. But this color node doesn't have to be solid. It can be actually dynamic using TSL. We can actually compute different color variations 
for this color node. Let's move on here to this part where we have our vertex shader. And here I'm taking the position local node and adding this, which I'm going to talk about. But this is creating this position node, which I'm then passing to the position node of our material. Now let's talk about our mesh a little bit. The mesh that we're using is an instanced mesh. So the cubes that you're seeing, each one of these cubes is an instance. So we're using a box geometry for each instance that's visible, but the position of each cube comes from this position node. So when we go up here and we see this bit of math going on, we can see that we're adding this thing to the position local node. And if we just pass in the position local, everything will be at 0, 0, 0, meaning we get every one of our instances in the center. And they're all now overlapping each other. So let's turn that back. And now what is this? Let's rewrite this to be in shader code. So if I wanted to write this exact line in shader code, it would look something like this. like this. So this is the Wixel code or the exact same Wixel code that this will produce. Uh, you can think of it that way. So we're taking the instance index from this buffer and we're adding it to the position local. Now what exactly is this buffer and where does it come from? Well this buffer is actually a storage buffer. If you're not familiar with storage buffers, I do have a video series on WebGPU which you can check out. But basically, this is a GPU-based array. You can think of it that way. And in this compute shader, we're writing to that buffer. So here's how you define a compute shader in TSL. You define this function, and you write some mathematical expression in TSL using TSL functions. For example, seal, power, float, these all come from TSL. Uh, it's a very functional language because it's JavaScript, and this compiles down to Wixel or GLSL based on the backend. And now, right off the bat, you see one of the very core problems of TSL, and that's that the syntax is very functional. And because shader programs are often math expressions, very, very complicated math expressions, it makes the code harder to read. Now, let's go over this code one more time to make sure you understand it. First, we're creating a buffer, a storage buffer that is going to hold the positions of each instance. Then what we're going to do is create a compute shader that computes the position of each instance and puts each little cube inside that larger cube. And that's where we use these TSL functions and some math to figure that out. Then we run this compute shader like this. We provide the count or the number of instances and the workgroup size. This is something that I've talked about in my WebGPU video on computers. If you're interested, you can check that out. And then we're adding that position, which we calculated and stored in the buffer, to the position that we already have in our vertex shader. And that acts basically as an offset from the original position, which is 0, 0, 0 in this case. And then we're computing this position node. We're passing it into the position node of the mesh physical node material. And this puts each instance in its correct position. And then we compute the color, which is very simple in this case. But now I want to talk about some of the problems of TSL and some of the strengths of TSL. So first of all, it was very easy for us to create the scene, uh, much easier than what you would have done if you were using raw web GPU. So this makes the job really, really easy, but the mathematical portion of this, the calculation part is where it's really, really uh, bad and ugly because TSL is not really good at expressing complicated mathematical expressions. So I'm going to show you another piece of code, which is going to excite you a little bit, I think. But it's exactly this code, 
But instead of using TSL for this part, I'm using WGSL or Wixel. So let me quickly switch to that branch where I have Wixel code instead of this. Now in this version, everything is exactly the same, except after we create the storage buffer, we create this Wixel FN. And this Wixel FN function comes from 3 slash TSL. And this allows us to write Wixel directly in TSL. And this is the pretty cool part of this, in my opinion, because now for these more complicated mathematical calculations, we can use Wixel. Um, obviously, this is not going to work with WebGL anymore because we're using Wixel and that only works with WebGPU. However, it's much, much easier to write these complicated mathematical expressions now. And the way that this works is that after you create this Wixel function right here, you have to call it and you have to pass in the parameters. So for example, the buffer, the names should be the same, buffer count index. And here we have buffer count and index. And this will give you this result, the exact same result as before, except we're using Wixel directly. Now, why am I showing you this example? It's because I believe this is a much better way to write code than the previous example where we use TSL. And the previous example works for both WebGL and WebGPU. So if you're going for maximum compatibility, that's, that's a better option. But this option is better in my opinion because in the long term, the major browsers are going to support WebGPU anyways. And it's kind of pointless to write complicated code in TSL like that. And there's one more reason why I think this is a much better way to write code compared to the previous version I showed you. And that's because WebGPU supports more features than WebGL. That's kind of the entire point of WebGPU. WebGPU is supposed to be a better API, a more complete API, and it's supposed to replace WebGL fully. And that is already happening to an extent because we have indirect, draw indirect, which is a WebGPU only feature. And this feature, if I go into the source code of this, which is available on GitHub, you can see that the 3JS repo also is using Wixel FN and they're using Wixel directly for this feature because this feature doesn't exist in WebGL. So there is no way for them to make this work in TSL. And so this begs the question, why is TSL created in the first place? Is it created for us to have a functional way of writing shader in JavaScript or is it created to support both WebGL and WebGPU at the same time? If it's the second reason, then it's kind of pointless because if you're going to use WebGPU and if your application is dependent on a feature like indirect draw, which only is supported in WebGPU, then what is going to happen with TSL? TSL is not going to be uh, that, that useful. But 3JS and the new version of 3JS is not all about TSL. And that's kind of the point of me making this video. I want to show you that even though TSL and shading and shader programming is part of this 3JS application, it's not all of it. And so in my opinion, there is plenty of reason to use 3JS still with Wixel compared to raw WebGPU. And it's because it makes your job a lot easier. For example, even in this application where I'm directly using Wixel, I'm using a lot of TSL uh, to make my job easier. For example, the storage buffer, the way, the way I'm creating it and using it and passing it around like a node is very, very effective in my opinion. And so my general opinion on this is that I love the new version of 3GS. I love it. Uh, and I think it's best if, if you use Wixel directly in 
three jazz. But the problem is, how are you going to understand Wixel and at a more broader level, Web GPU, if you're just learning three jazz? And the answer to that is probably that you cannot, uh, because you you need to understand some of some of the Web GPU concepts in order to be able to use Wixel and use buffers. And if you're interested in that, I have a few videos on Web GPU. I think it's very important for you to understand these underlying, more important Web GPU concepts before you jump into a framework like 3JS. And that's the point that I hope you're not missing. Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this took me some time to make, but I hope that you learned something today. And if you're interested in learning TSL or if you want to learn TSL, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I'll make a video on it soon. And if you're interested in Web GPU, I'm making a course that is going to be coming out in a couple of months. So subscribe to my channel to get notified when that is published. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next videos.